This video is sponsored by Incogni. More about them in a little bit. Now, recently I made a video looking at the ways tube trains have evolved over the last 16 decades, which was far more popular than I was expecting. I was concentrating on the passenger experience and the use of space rather than the more technical aspects. But there was a point that a lot of people raised in the comments section that I thought I'd just address here. Now, as you'll know, if you've ever ridden a train on the London Underground, the seats are almost always longitudinal, or sideways, along the coach. The only exceptions on the current network are the 1972 stock on the Bakerloo line and the S8 stock on the Metropolitan line, both of which have a mix of transverse and longitudinal seating. The main reason the seating is sideways is space. You can fit more people into a tube carriage if the seats are sideways, albeit many of those people will have to stand. But there's another reason, and it all comes down to something called the loading gauge. But before we get into that, let's have a word from our sponsor, my friends at Incogni. Living as we do in the cyberpunk future is great and all, but it does have its downsides. We may have advanced artificial intelligence, huge amounts of knowledge at our fingertips, and Ryan Gosling, but we also have evil megacorporations harvesting our information and selling it on to data brokers. That puts you at risk of identity theft. With that information, fraudsters can take out loans and credit cards in your name, take over your online accounts, even commit crimes in your name. These are just a few of the things they can do. Cybercrime isn't as cool as it looks in the movies, that's for sure. Now that's where Incogni comes in. It chases down these vile cyber hoarders and forces them to remove your data from their database. The way it works is this. You set up an account with them, by following the link in the description below, and you authorise them to act on your behalf. Then they hassle the data brokers with emails demanding the removal of your information in accordance with the law which the brokers legally have to comply with. Incogni keeps you up to date with their progress by email and I was actually pretty amazed by how many people have my data. I mean, I like to think I'm pretty careful online. Or should I say, by the number of people who had my information. Anyway, you can judge for yourself by clicking the link in the description below, and the first hundred people to do so and enter the code HAZARD will get 60% off. Incogni. Because the data brokers had it coming. When you're building a railway, there are two types of gauge you have to think about. There's the track gauge, which is the distance between the rails, and there's the loading gauge, which is how tall and wide the rolling stock can be. It determines everything about the way your railway is built, the height of the bridges and tunnels, the positioning of the platforms, signals and line-side buildings. It even affects things like the speed a train can run. Britain has a small loading gauge compared to other countries. Sometimes there were differences of gauge even between different British companies, the Great Western Railway had a much larger loading gauge than most railways because it had originally been built with a track gauge of 7 feet as compared to the standard 4 feet 8.5 inches. Subsurface underground lines, that is, the District, Circle, Metropolitan and Hammersmith and City, are built to more or less the same loading gauge as ordinary trains, albeit slightly wider. In fact, they share track with non-underground trains in a couple of places. The deep level tube lines, which is to say, all the others, were built with a far smaller loading gauge. This was largely economic. Tunnels are expensive and difficult to build. Smaller tunnel, less work. And the lines were mostly intended to be self-contained. It wasn't initially anticipated that the trains would need to share track with those of any other company. So, why not go with a smaller loading gauge? Of course, this raised a problem. You can scale a train down, but you can't scale passengers down. Well, not ethically, anyway. You still need a carriage interior capable of holding a standing adult. But you can still reduce the overall height of the train. Instead of putting the carriage on top of the wheels, you put it between the wheels. Ah, but then you have another problem. That reduces the width of the carriage interior. Not if you're smart, and that's where the seating comes in. If the seating is longitudinal, you can fit it very neatly over the wheels. Every deep-level train from the City and South London Railway's 1890 coaches onwards has used this layout. Even coaches which have some transverse seating have longitudinal seating over the actual wheels. 
And so the sideways seating on tube trains serves two purposes. It increases space inside the tube train and decreases the space used outside. Well, I hope you enjoyed this longitudinal tale from the tube. If so, please do leave a like and consider subscribing for more. I would like as ever to thank my donors on Ko-fi and Patreon and here on YouTube for your generous support. You are the sensible ceiling to my average passenger. I would also like to thank Incogni. Click on the link below to take advantage of their offer. And I'll see you all again very soon for another Tale from the Tube.